Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Space This Week. This is my Monday news show where every single week I share the latest and greatest updates regarding Starship development, all the biggest space news events from the past week, all the launch we saw and all the other stuff that I think is worth talking about. And that's it, that's what this video is going to be about. Really should script these intros, but hey, what are you going to do? Let's just roll the intro card. We'll begin today's video with, as we always do, Starship updates. On Saturday last week, Ship 24 was lifted onto the suborbital pad A thrust simulator for testing, as captured here in these shots by Starship Gazer. This device tests the ship's ability to withstand having the Raptor engines firing away during a flight and uses hydraulic rams to simulate the effects of the engine thrust. We're expecting to see these tests be carried out at some point this week as there is a road closure window in place over the next few days. Last week I covered an internal pipe failure on Ship 24 after we saw workers removing a very bent section of tubing from the guts of the ship. Sheesh, that really doesn't look good. But as you can see from these shots here, crews have dutifully replaced the damaged hardware now. Hopefully SpaceX figured out what went wrong and that Ship 24 can sail through the rest of its testing. Things are looking good for it so far. On Friday last week, Elon Musk confirmed on Twitter that Ship 24 had passed its cryogenic proof test, so hopefully everything else goes well. From the inevitable static fire to hopefully the eventual launch of this machine. After all, it's still expected to make the first orbital flight test along with Super Heavy Booster 7. The lift of Ship 24 onto suborbital pad A is quite a big event in and of itself. This is the first time a starship has been on suborbital pad A since Ship 15's historic flight. Speaking of orbital launches, how is the timeline for the orbital flight test looking? Right now, Elon Musk is confident that the next fully stacked Starship Super Heavy rocket is only a few weeks away now. The last time we saw a full stack was with Ship 20 and Booster 4, which was a few months ago now. And of course, since these shots were taken, both vehicles have been retired. The next stack will be with Booster 7 and Ship 24, which will happen once all Raptor 2 engines required for the orbital flight test, that's 33 for the booster and 9 for the ship, of which 6 will be the larger vacuum Raptor versions, are installed. We now know that all of the required engines are complete and ready for install, and if the past is anything to go by, SpaceX are usually pretty fast at attaching these to the ships. So hopefully Elon is being accurate in saying it's only a few weeks away, as opposed to his usual, somewhat overly optimistic timeline predictions. Once the Starship is fully stacked, the next question will be, well, when will this happen? But like, in real life. <laughs> well, the big limiting factor right now is waiting for the FAA to finish its approval. On Wednesday, we received the disappointing, but at this rate not really unexpected news, that the FAA are once again delaying their environmental review deadline. But this time only by two weeks. Now, this review is vital for an orbital flight to happen, so this is an excellent indicator that the FAA might actually be finally closing in on finishing things up. The very next day after this announcement, in fact, we then saw that the FAA had completed Section 4F of their review, which we believe to be the final remaining item to be checked off before SpaceX are cleared for launch, which is amazing news and hopefully is definite confirmation that we're now very nearly there. Once officially approved, SpaceX will still need to apply for a launch license from the FAA, but this should hopefully be a fairly trivial process by comparison to the environmental review. And I am saying all of this in before the tinfoil hat wearers claim that the big government will find a way to delay the mission further so that SLS can launch first, even though they have no incentive to do that, and that SLS's mission, which is the moon landings, literally requires Starship to work. <clears throat> anyway, check out these great aerial shots from Cooper Heim. They clearly show SpaceX making great progress on completing the Mega Bay. The roof is really coming together now, and we can just see the Starship factory building coming along as well. This, of course, will replace the tents that SpaceX are currently using to build the Starships, and have been using them since 2019, right at the start of the Starship program. Can you believe this drone video by Austin Barnard was taken in 2019? Yep, it's literally just a tent and hoppy and that's it. It's incredible to compare this with the aerial shots we see from Cooper. It just puts into perspective how far SpaceX have come in relatively little time. Ship 25 is coming along really well. Check out these night photos of the Ship 25 nose cone. The tiling is now nearly complete. SpaceX really do make the building of these rocket ships seem so routine and easy, but this is seriously impressive and very highly skilled work. The people behind the Starship program are truly masters of their field. If you want to develop your own mastery of skills, then why not consider Skillshare, who have sponsored today's video. 
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for everyone who loves learning. And if there's a specific skill that you're trying to learn or enhance your progress with, then Skillshare is the perfect place to start. I myself have been following the Learn Guitar, The Complete Beginner's Guide class by Mark Barnacle. I used to play the violin a lot as a child, but I haven't touched any instrument for like 15 years now. So I thought I'd dust off a hand-me-down guitar that a friend gave me and try to shred some banging tunes once again. I have got a little way to go, but I'm making good progress so far. Skillshare can help you too make 2022 a new year of learning, growth and connection through creativity. The first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. The Kennedy Space Center has opened a new attraction, The Gateway. It's an amazing exhibit filled with real flight hardware and mock-ups, showing visitors a glimpse into the future of spaceflight. As you can see, one of the show's stars is a recovered Falcon 9 booster. This shot by Kyle Montgomery really illustrates just how massive these things are. And Sean of Planet Deimos Photography caught some great close-ups of one of the booster's grid fins. You can see just how brutal the aerodynamic effects are on these things. As you can see, the Falcon 9 has a rounded top, meaning that this was a Falcon Heavy side booster. Specifically, the side booster on this Falcon Heavy flight, which of course was a big one. This was the 2018 Falcon Heavy demo mission, the very first flight of the enormous rocket that of course sent Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster on a simulated Mars flyby. I say simulated because the car didn't actually go to Mars, but it would have done had SpaceX launched at a suitable transfer window. This mission was only a test after all, so the specific trajectory didn't really matter. Anyway, I now realise I've spent a long time talking about a frankly ancient mission. What about a more modern one? Well, last week we saw Russia launch a Soyuz 2.1A from Baikonur, and Reddit user Black Marine noticed that they had, ironically, written Russia doesn't abandon its own on a disposable fairing, which is part of a rocket that is also entirely disposable, which is just quite funny, but also quite sad. It's another pathetic propaganda attempt here. GG Poo Poo's, you really showed us all here. We also had two launches from China last week. On Thursday, they launched a Long March 2C from the Zichang Satellite Launch Center in Sichuan Province, Southwest China. The rocket carried nine Geely Constellation Group 1 satellites, which, according to official sources, have successfully entered their planned orbits and are all equipped with multispectral remote sensing payloads and will carry out remote sensing application verifications such as future travel, vehicle machine and mobile phone remote sensing interaction, and marine environmental protection through on-orbit networking. In short, these are basically remote sensing and communication satellites. <laughs> the other Chinese launch we saw happened on Sunday. This was a Long March 2F, which is effectively a very similar rocket to the Russian Soyuz. On board was the Shenzhou 14 crew. They are Taikonauts Chen Dong, Lui Yang and Kai Zuzi. I'm really sorry if I got any of those pronunciations wrong. This is the third crew of three Taikonauts to be sent to the Chinese space station, and this is the second long duration mission to the station, with the crew here expected to spend 180 days on board. Last week, we also had a suborbital launch from Blue Origin. This was another crewed flight of the New Shepard launch vehicle, which launched and landed at Blue Origin's launch site one in West Texas on Saturday last week. For the third time, the new Shepard capsule carried six passengers to space. They were Evan Dick, Katya Ekazarita, Hamish Harding, Victor Correa Hespana, Jason Robinson, and Victor Vescovo. NS-21 is the seventh mission launch and landing for this New Shepard launch vehicle, New Shepard 24, and this was the fifth human spaceflight for Blue Origin. Of the six passengers, I'd say two of them are probably worth highlighting. 26-year-old Ekazareta became the first Mexican-born woman and youngest American woman to reach space, while Dick became the first ever repeat New Shepard crew member. He also flew aboard New Shepard on the NS-19 mission back in December 2021. We had some pretty exciting announcements from NASA last week. The biggest one, I think, was the announcement of the first ever full-color images from the James Webb Space Telescope. These will be released on the 12th of July, and NASA promises that they will be amazing, which I totally believe. The test images we've seen so far were really great themselves, so I can't wait to see what James Webb can show us. I'm going to try something new here. Let me know if this bit sucks and you don't want this again, but I thought I'd recap what Laon Aerospace was up to last week, as in the Kerbal mission I did. These space news videos tend to get more views than my Kerbal stuff, so I figured you might be more interested in checking out the video if you get a quick summation of it first. Anyway, last week I rescued the legend himself, Scott Manley, from the surface of Lathe. 
This was a fun challenge and a really fun collaboration. Since I'm only about halfway through unlocking the tech tree, I haven't got much high tech stuff like the rapier unlocked. If you want to check this video out, then there'll be a link at the end of this video to my most recent upload on screen, which statistically means that it'll be this Slate mission. <laughs> now, NASA also announced that Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace will provide NASA with next gen spacesuits, which will be used for the Artemis moon missions and for working outside the International Space Station and help prepare for human missions to Mars. NASA also conducted full-scale egress testing of the Viper Moon Rover prototype to verify that it'll be able to successfully exit the Griffin Lunar Lander and safely make it down to the surface. This mission will see the Viper Moon Rover land on the lunar south pole in late 2023, and it's a mission I'm definitely really excited for. It'll provide invaluable information to help NASA plan the first crewed Artemis missions to the moon's surface. I would like to give a massive thank you now to all the people who are scrolling on the left of your screen. They are my Patreon and YouTube channel members, and it's their financial support that allows me to continue making these videos. If you want your name to appear in lights and gain early access to videos and exclusive behind the scenes stuff when possible, then consider joining via the links in the description or the card on screen. Otherwise, just your support is enough. Liking and subscribing always help me out immensely, and I always do appreciate it. Many thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.